Hi. Today I'd like to talk about the poetry of Jim Harrison, one of my favorite poets. Uh, Jim Harrison was born, he's an American poet, born in 1937. He's perhaps most well known for his prose. Legends of the Fall it was a very famous novella of his turned into a film. And he's a marvelous poet as well. And unfortunately, I think some people spend more time with his prose, which is equally good, but I would hate to see his poetry not uh, as well known or appreciated as it should be. So I'd like to um, read a few Jim Harrison poems for you today. This first poem that I'd like to read is called The Davenport Lunar Eclipse. Overlooking the Mississippi, I never thought I'd get this old. It was mostly my confusion about time and the moon and seeing the lovely way homely old men treat their homely old women. In Nebraska and Iowa, the lunchtime touch over green jello and pineapple and fried fish rectangles for $2.95. When I passed Des Moines, the radio said there were long lines to see the entire cow sculpted out of butter. The earth is right smack between the sun and the moon. The black waitress told me at the salty pelican on the waterfront, home from wild Houston to nurse her sick dad. My good eye is burning up from fatigue as it squints up above the Mississippi, where the moon is losing its edge to black. It likely doesn't know what's happening to it, I thought, pressed down to my meal and wine by a fresh load of incomprehension. My grandma lived in Davenport in the 1890s, just after Wounded Knee, a single event the beginning of America's sickness unto death. I'd like to nurse my father back to health. He's been dead 30 years, I said to the waitress who agreed. That's why she came home, she said. You only got one. Now I find myself at 51 in Davenport and drop the issue right into the Mississippi, where it is free to swim with the moon's reflection. At the bar, there are two girls of incomprehensible beauty for the time being, as Swedish as my grandma, speaking in bad grammar as they listen to a band of middle-aged Swede saxophonists braying bye-bye Blackbird over and over with a clumsy but specific charm. The girls fail to notice me Perhaps I should give them the thousand dollars in my wallet, but I've forgotten just how. I feel pleasantly old and stupid, deciding not to worry about who I am, but how I spend my days, until I tear into the weak places like a thin, worn sheet. Back in my room, I can't hear the river passing like time or the moon emerging from the shadow of earth. But I can see the water that never repeats itself. It's very difficult to look at the world and into your heart at the same time. In between, a life has passed. That's Jim Harrison's poem, The Davenport Lunar Eclipse, from his uh, new and collected poems from Copper Canyon Press, The Shape of the Journey. Another poem of his I'd like to read from the same collection is entitled, After Reading Takahashi. This is um, dedicated to Lucian, Peter, and Waylon. Takahashi is the, um, the great Japanese Dadaist, Takahashi Shinkichi, a poet I also deeply admire and a poet who's influenced Jim Harrison. It's only fitting that I'm sitting here drinking a cup of Jen Maicha tea, a Japanese beautiful grassy tea as I read this poem. This 
poem has this incredible beginning, by the way. After reading Takahashi, nothing is the same to anyone. Moscow is east of Nairobi, but thinks of herself as perpetually west. The bird sees the top of my head and even trade for her feathered belly. Our eyes staring through the nose bridge, never to see each other. She is not I, I not her. So what you think, having little notion of my concerns? Oh, that dank basement of so what, known by all, though never quite the same way. All of us drinking through a cold afternoon. Our eyes are on the mirror behind the bottles, on the snow out the window, which the wind chases fruitlessly, each in his separateness, drinking, talk, noises coming out of our mouths. In the corner, a pretty girl plays pinball. I have no language to talk to her. I have come to the point in life when I could be her father. This was never true before. The bear hunter talked about the mountains. We looked at them together out of the tavern window in emigrant Montana. He spent 50 years in the Absorca Mountains hunting grizzly bears and at one time wolves. We will never see the same mountains. He knows them like his hands, his wife's breasts and legs, his old dog sitting outside in the pickup. I only see beautiful mountains and say beautiful mountains, to which he nods graciously, but they are a photo of China to me. And all lessons are fatal. The great snowy owl that flew in front of me so that I ducked in the car, it will never happen again. I've been warned by a snowy night, an owl, the infinite black above and below me, to look at all creatures and things with a billion eyes, not struggling with the single heartbeat that is my life. That's called After Reading Takahashi. And finally, in today's installment, I would like to read you a newer poem from Jim Harrison. And this is from his book, Saving Daylight, also from Copper Canyon Press. And it's a letter poem to uh, Sam Hamill and Dan Gerber. Letter poem to Sam Hamill and Dan Gerber. I've been translating the language with which creatures address God, including the non-harmonic bleats of dying sheep, the burpish fish, the tenor groan of the toad in the snake's mouth, the croak of the seagull flopping on the yellow line, misnamed mockingbird and catbird singing hundreds of borrowed songs, coyotes joyous yipe when they bring down a fawn that honks like a bus bicycle horn for his helpless mother. The ladybug on the table was finally still. I strained my ear close to her during the final moments, but only heard Mozart from the other room. She was beyond reach. One night under a big moon, I heard the massive, lunged scream of a horse pounding in the pasture across the creek. When his breathing above the creek, then, I'm sorry, uh, pounding in the pasture across the creek, then his breathing above the creek gurgle. This language is closer to what we spoke in Africa 70,000 years ago before we started writing things down, and now we can't seem to stop. I can't imagine how we thought that we're better than any other creatures, except that we wrote ourselves into it. Someone looked down from Babel's tower and got the wrong idea. 
ignoring the birds above him. I learned all this one day, listening to a raven funeral in a fir tree behind my cabin, and learned it again, listening to a wolf howling from the river delta nearby. It's an old secret past anyone's caring, or so it seems. Yours, Jim Harrison, June 20th, 2001. That's letter poem to Sam Hamill and Dan Gerber from Jim Harrison's Saving Daylight. I hope that you will um, continue reading the poetry and prose of Jim Harrison, uh, an American original and just a, a marvelous, marvelous poet.